I'm Dr. Rosanna Grace-Swain in practice with Kareth Luco. Um, and we are BJC physicians and deliver exclusively out of barn. And that was an incredibly generous <laughs> introduction, Kathy. I stole my cat an apology. It is true. I appeared at her giving birth with a flashlight in her eyes under my bunk bed as a child. Maybe that's why she was so ornery after that. I don't know. But it certainly did spark my interest in um, obstetrics after that. And it's really exciting for me to be here. And in fact, I could ramble on so long about it. I jotted down a few notes. So I may glance down to keep from rambling too long. And part of why it's exciting to be here is 12 years ago when I joined Dr. Turner, none of my patients knew what a doula was. I would I sort of self-identify patients that I thought would really benefit from one, mention it to them, and I'd get these cross-eyed looks like, what is that? That's weird. I don't want to have a natural birth. I don't want to touch my baby. Um, and now we're here with formally trained doulas, hospitals incorporating doulas more, not enough yet, but on the trend towards that, and really developing training programs so we have doulas who are well-trained and who can gain the confidence of physicians, and physicians can gain their confidence as well, and we can really work together as a team to help our moms have those common goals that we all have, which of course are healthy mom, healthy baby, and a great experience. So it's exciting that we've come this far, and it's really been the parenting resources presence in the community that has sort of blossomed this. This didn't exist really until they opened and the increase in chatter about doulas and the number of patients that come and ask about doulas, sometimes even at their OB confirmation, which is really a little earlier than we enjoy talking about it, to be honest, has gone up a lot. And they come in with lists of three or four that they've whittled down and they want to know which one do I think would be best for them, and that's great. Um, and often they get a doula and it's a great experience, but there are still areas for improvement both in our understanding of how to use doulas and in doulas using us and for what the mutual expectations are. And I think we're at a great branch point in history, which Kathy touched on a little bit, where we're recognizing that women really do need and benefit from intimate support in labor but we don't live in familial communities anymore. So we don't have aunts and moms around us in the birth and maybe even more importantly postpartum to check in and say, yeah, that's normal you feel like cried today. You didn't sleep last night. That's normal. Your experience is normal, that validation. And that in labor experience uh, that you might have gotten when we gave birth at home or even in hospitals in a neighborhood with your family. Now many of us live geographically really far from our family and even if they, you know, fly in for the birth, they haven't been there for that journey. They haven't understood your sciatica pain or your heartburn or your anxiety because your testing made you worry about something. And that makes it hard to really bond in those moments even when they do arrive. So I think we're realizing women need that. Um, they need that support. And like many other services now, we're paying people to do things, right? So sisters would come over and clean before and cook meals. Well, she lives in LA, so now we hire a food service to bring food to our door. You know, and we have a cleaning lady that comes. Lots of services we now pay for that historically were shared amongst a family or a community, or maybe it was a church community, but even those networks aren't as good. So we see that as a change too. And following that is sort of this change of doulas being a hobby, an on the side thing, I'm gonna be a doula, I'm gonna go to these births, but my real profession is X, Y, or Z, or I'm really dedicated to being a stay at home mom, but I'm gonna do this on the side, to embracing being a doula as a profession. Uh, something that often needs training, although some of it can be apprenticeship, some of it can be formal training through the programs at places like Parenting Resources and other places. But then that has an economic side to it too that's evolving. So we have this recognize, recognition of a need for support by hospitals and doctors and families, and we have an economic opportunity for women to create a new career pathway that has never been there before and really formally recognized. So I think that's an exciting place to be um, in time and to be a part of sort of crafting that conversation and how do we do that? How do we bring those two things together with the ultimate goal eventually for doula support to be an integrated part of healthcare and recognized by our payer systems as, as well. And then sort of one of the things they asked me to talk about was why should doctors care about having doulas? Why should we advocate that for our patients? We don't get financial benefit from it. We don't get kickbacks. We don't often get referrals from doulas. So why would we want to do that? And there's not a lot of audience here that are doctors, but online I'm sure that there are some. And so I'm gonna sort of speak to that a little bit too and hope that it falls on the ears of the doulas in a way that makes sense and helps you guys feel more part of the team or give you ideas about how to be a meaningful part of the team. 
you know, I may be biased. The first birth I ever watched was with a doula through the program at Barnes that had a doula program there as part of a grant. And we had doulas that could attend births for free for patients. And in my retrospective view, it was a great program. And I think the outcomes were great. And the grant money ran out. Um, so it ended, unfortunately. But it was with a woman named Nancy Cooksey. Um, you may have spent time with Nancy, too. And so the first time I ever saw a human give birth was with a doula. And that shaped my my narrative of what birth is like and what the person there supporting them is thinking and doing and watching for and seeing. So that may sort of give me a bias for why I like doulas. But I think from a physician standpoint, the thing to keep in mind is they can be your helper. They can make your job easier. Um, I think one of the misnomers, and Kathy touched on this a little bit, is that doulas can often be sold to physicians as a threat to their medical expertise. No one likes to have their expertise challenged, whether it's your doula expertise or your medical expertise or your nursing expertise. Um, and when the conversation is that doulas will be obstructive or they're there to challenge you and ask why you're doing everything with the implication that they don't trust it as opposed to the implication that they want to understand, that can make physicians feel uneasy with doulas. Um, and sort of getting rid of that bias and that sort of impression amongst physicians is one of the things that I hope to do and hope the people watching this will sort of see and we can sort of spread that word as we go out and talk to physicians about why doulas are helpful. Get rid of the idea that they're threatening anything in terms of your expertise. That's not, that's not true. It's a myth. And so we have to get past that to really be able to then embrace doulas in our practice and in our birthing settings in the hospital and with the nurses as well. The same thing for nurses. The doulas are not there threatening your expertise. They're certainly not going to be doing the things that you're going to be doing as a doula, excuse me, as a nurse. Um, they're there to really help you, which ultimately always translates into helping your patient have a healthy, safe, and great experience in their, in their birth. You know, so for me, how does that translate into what happens in the office? So if I have a patient who I know has a doula, then there's certain things that I know I don't necessarily need to talk about with the patient. And I can really focus on the things that I am an expert in, um, in terms of medical care. And I'll bring this up in a minute, but why I actually think the most appropriate place for evolution of doula use is in our high-risk pregnancies in just a minute. But you know, and I can converse with the doulas. I love it when they come to a prenatal visit, once they've established a relation with relationship between the patient and the doula and then make sure and say are you going to cover with them what the facility has to offer are you going to cover with them what to expect that first 48 hours when they get home in terms of setting up the home to be receptive to come home to with this new squishy little baby that can't do anything and you're going to feel exhausted so i can triage out things that i otherwise sometimes feel like i need to talk to them about you're going to cover car seat safety and where they can go to do that and all those things so it really can take a lot off of our plate um, and it works best, I find, when you have a relationship with that doula and you can meet them early on and set those guidelines. So they know what you want them to cover and you know what you can leave off your, your plate as well. You know, and I think that it can really help build confidence between your patient and you to have that third person in there double checking that all the things are getting crossed that we are most likely to forget as we get caught up in the blood pressures in the labs and is the baby growing this or that. Um, and the more confident the patient feels in her whole care team, the better her experience is, is going to be. So those are some of the ways that I like to use doulas and that I find that they actually are really helpful. And I really try to encourage patients who can use a doula to establish a postpartum plan with the doula because the construct of obstetric care in America really falls short when it comes to the postpartum portion of it. I think historically in part that was because women went home to a community of 10 other women down the street who also gave birth and can help them navigate through a lot of the things. And we don't do that anymore. Um, and our sort of construct of care hasn't caught up to the sort of modern geography of families and the working demands and who's giving care to the children. I mean, it's pretty modern now that a lot of babies go home and the stay-at-home parent is either the father or the, you know, the non-biologic parent. Um, so making sure they have a plan for that postpartum time because we are not going to see them for two to six weeks. And that's, those are big, big gaps um, that the doulas can really be helping your voice and help guide those communications. So you don't get all those extra communications that you don't really need to deal with because they don't require your medical expertise. But the patient needs to reach out to someone. And so they contact you. And the doulas can feel a lot, feel a lot of those for you and also help them get in when they need to before they've gone from mastitis to an abscess. Um, so it helps the patient as well. So that's my utility of doulas and how I think we can incorporate them. 
like I mentioned, one of the areas that I think that we underutilize doulas the most is in high-risk pregnancies. And as Kathy mentioned, there's this idea, oh, she has a doula. She wants a natural birth. She wants a lotus birth. I bet she's going to encapsulate her placenta. Um, and sure, that's true. Those patients all often do want doulas and benefit from them. And, but we have that expectation that those are the patients who are going to utilize doulas. So that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And we assume that the woman who has a super high-risk pregnancy or already knows she needs to have a C-section because of some prior medical determination doesn't need a doula because she's not trying to avoid an epidural. And I think that those are actually the patients that would most benefit from a doula because those are the patients that we really need to have lengthy medical discussions. We don't get longer visits. We don't get paid more to take care of high-risk patients or patients who need longer medical counseling about this procedure versus that procedure or what testing to work up this problem we've identified. So really, the doulas can fill in the gaps there best of all in my, in my mind. And it's the place where we don't use them very much. So I hope that we can start reaching out to our MFM or our high-risk obstetric colleagues, those practices like ours that take care of a number of high-risk patients as well and really invite those doulas to come in. And that comes brings me to the point that it's not just telling patients, we know you're gonna have a pregnancy that may go differently than some of your friends who use doulas, pregnancies and deliveries have gone, but we think you could really benefit from this. That's one conversation that we need to own. But the other one is really to the doula community and advocating and making sure that those intentions about birth fit to each patient and understanding how you can support a patient who's gonna need a C-section at 35 weeks for a prior medical indication, and what's gonna be different, and how do we not discount her birth experience because she's not having that natural birth or she's not having lateral onset of labor at home um, and not able to use hypnobirthing or whatever the agendas are that we think help create a good birth experience, but really trying to recognize what will be her birth experience and how do we optimize that? How do we make her feel confident in those decisions? How do we make her feel confident in her experience and highlight what's still going to be a great experience? How do we get skin to skin right away? How do we get you know, visualization of the baby being, being delivered out of the abdomen. What are the things that are going to be most important to you? So you look back and you feel exhilarated by that experience and proud of it and like it was as beautiful as you could have imagined, even if it wasn't the birth you imagined at 20 years old. Um, and that, I think, is going to require an ongoing dialogue with doulas and some formal training about what are high-risk deliveries, what can, what is feasible in a C-section to maximize those maternal experiences and what's really not safe or not realistic. So that's an area that I hope to work with Kathy and other people in the community to really try to grow in terms of doula opportunities and integration within the, the whole system. And I'm sad to hear they won't be in this facility anymore because I love this facility, um, but it'll be fun to see where Parenting Resources takes all their services from here. Do you want me to answer questions, Kathy, or do you want, yeah, you want and Kate? Oh, one thing I forgot to say, and this was really intended more for sort of the physicians and thinking about how to incorporate doulas into your practice and what do you want the doula to see you as. Clearly, they're going to see you as the midwife or the physician practitioner, but at the end of a delivery, one of the things I like to walk away and ask myself was, do I think that that doula left not only thinking I was a good medical expert, but that I was a good advocate for their patient? And if that's what the doula's takeaway is, that the physician was a great advocate for her patient and a medical expert, then that's great. And that's what we should strive for as physicians who work with doulas, is achieving that confidence and dual sort of respect in terms of being an advocate while also being a physician or a midwife. And that's it. Have you ever held like a, a debrief or like if you think they did a sex like a doula did an exceptional job, do you ever like pull them aside at the end and say, you know, wow, that was really impressive? Or sure. Have you ever, you ever do that? Yeah. Sometimes we high five. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. physicians and doula care is that the, a lot of the research that supports the benefits of doula care is from a community that physicians aren't used to going to to look at research. And so it is kind of, there's a gap of knowledge and a lack of understanding of how they really can benefit patients 
and also produce really, really reliable and good birth outcomes. So it's difficult, though, when it's a busy OB practice. The challenge is how do you connect with those physicians and how do you say, can I make an office visit? I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying to, br- you know, I'm not going to bring you back to lunch because I don't have any money. But how can I have a right. conversation with you about how I can help your patients and kind of get, help them to begin to understand that? Because I feel like they do have that that view that you discussed in the beginning about what doulas do, and it's mm-hmm. a very archaic and lots of myth driven, you know, um, uh, lack of information. It is, and I can see that being incredibly hard in thinking about people trying to get in my office, people who do bring lunch and are trying to sell us things. I, the truth is we don't really have time. Right. Um, right. And even if you know we would love to sit down and have a lunch, the truth is we just don't have that time. There's a million things tugging at us in all directions. So it's not a personal offense or not even necessarily a personal lack of interest in that. Um, and I do think that having larger sort of organizations embrace doulas and those sort of being the front people who can then organize a larger event um, and have physician liaisons in the groups come in and help deliver that information I think will be helpful. So lots of hospitals are now bringing more physicians into sort of lower level leadership roles and coming to deliver messages to clinicians from you've got to fix your coding to we need to initiate this initiative or hey, why are our diabetic patients doing so bad, let's figure out how we fix that out, Um, and really reaching out to those leads in, because I think as an individual doula in many practices, it's going to be really hard to get time and to get an ear, because you need more than five minutes. You're not coming trying to sell the newest, cheapest version of a birth control pill they've already used for 20 years. You need to really convince them of why it matters and why you're the best one for them to partner with, and that's hard. So I do... think you should keep trying and you'll get a few bites but it's probably going to be super frustrating don't give up and as the larger organizations get a bigger bargaining power basically and can find leads into the larger groups and as we know healthcare is getting consolidated there's really only three groups in the St. Louis area now um, and then getting in that way I think is probably going to be the most effective long-term way but that's just an opinion. It almost needs to come through the nursing department and nursing Yeah. So the and they are the large group. They are a lot of times the ones that have spent time with doulas and they can see the outcomes and how it works so beautifully with their right. patients where the physician is in and out and he doesn't really see the be- the benefit. But he's the one who has contact prenatally with the with the patients and when you know, and should be asking and advocating and things. So that's kind of part with our care model being the way it is. But I know with nurses they have less and less time to spend one on one with their patients and so doulas can really No, absolutely. Right. One on one person being there with them the whole time. Oh, but yet they still feel kind of threatened, the nurses do. I think that's and what I'm sure. And I think it comes from a lack of like, I'm not really sure what you're here to do. I, you know, I think you're here for the patient. Are, are you yeah. going to step on my toes? Are you, they don't know. It's just, it's a lack of understanding. And it is. And like right. It, managing expectations is everything, right? So it's managing expectations, setting, you said setting the rules, right? You know, no one's going to be happy if you, and a nurse is never going to be happy if they come in a doula is doing a cervical check. That's really going to be a confusing situation for everyone. So setting boundaries, setting expectations, and Barnes has been um, providing education to the nurses, and I, it has been a long time um, that I have had a doula attended birth at Barnes where there's been any f- you know, friction or sense of friction there. You know, the nurses there know us too and know our patients and know sort of our way of doing things. As Kathy said, we're a group of three obstetricians that practice with a generally similar outlook, which is why it's taken us forever to find people to join the practice that fit in the right way. Um, So that also drives the nurses' expectations of how the birth is going to go and how we want the doulas to to participate. Yeah. And one of the things I say to doulas is pick a few facilities to really get to know and ask the nurses, where are the birthing balls? Can I have a code to that door? Some places will say yes, some places will say no. Where are things? Really know the facility. That will also help you build confidence in the patient, too. Um, and also something that you can take off the physician's plate. So I don't have to reassure them, yes, we have birthing balls. Right. Yes, we have birthing bars. Yes, we do skin to skin. Yes, we have heat packs for your back. No, we don't rub soap on your perineum or whatever a patient asked me about recently. Um, 
know, get to know your facilities and that will go a long way with the nurses and help build confidence in the, the patients. And two things for them, right? So I do a call in or I select patients. I also go do in service as well. And that's what I did. I go yeah, there, great. I yeah. <laughs> they work long shifts. <laughs> no, and, and get to know you and they feel like, oh yeah, she's trustworthy. She's right. She's getting the right information, she's good education. You're not yeah. trustworthy. You know, you give them accurate information and you show up and you say, Let's show up and they're happy to have the service. Yep. So you know, you get the service. You give them the service, go in there, say, I'll give you a quick, give you an hour, in service, go in there once a month, show them that you know, you're reliable and have your a lot of that is just you being an educator. And you build that up and and I just thought this, I don't know if going to the hospital-based childbirth classes would be an inroad too. You could see what the hospitals are teaching, which might be eye-opening, and also highlight their strengths and weaknesses, which would help you then focus some of your patient education, and also be a way to just meet the person who is most likely then to disseminate back to the nurses information about doulas, because the women, I only know of women, that are teaching these birthing classes at the hospital are the childbirth advocates in the hospital. They've been identified as the people who are expert, have the expertise in this. They're the ones advocating um, for that component of care. So, I, and I think barns are like $35. So it wouldn't be a huge investment to just sign up for one. Sometimes grandparents go and all kinds of stuff and just see, that's just a thought I just had. Thank you.